Hi everyone, Patek here. Uh, today's video it will be about why you should read uh, The Green Bone Saga by Fondali. I am quite excited about this video because the last time I did a why you should read video it was about 5 months ago. It was for The Miss Bone Trilogy by Brandon Sanderson. The Miss Bone Trilogy by Brandon Sanderson is definitely the most important series that I've ever read. And the reason why I'm making this video is that I finally I finally find a new trilogy that I think is better than the Miss Bond trilogy for me. Yeah, and that is the Green Bone Saga by Fondali. So the Green Bone Saga is a trilogy consisting of Jade City, Jade War, and Jade Legacy. It still amazes me to this day that this is actually a Fondali's first foray into adult fantasy series. Fondali has mentioned that she wrote this series after she envisioned a society where a magical jade granted special abilities to a warrior with proper training and bloodline. And this idea, combined with her long-time enthusiasm for mafia stories, became this modern gangster family saga. This is an epic urban fantasy series that became the best completed fantasy trilogy that I've ever read. Yes, it is that good. I regard this trilogy that highly. This video probably won't be able to do this, uh, this series justice. Lee must have channeled real magic, seriously, she must be a real green bone warrior to be able to finish writing this ambitious trilogy. Especially the concluding installment, Jade Legacy. Jade CD and Jade War were already so superb in my opinion. Both of them were already some of the best books that I've ever read in fantasy. I love both Jade CD and Jade War so much, I reread those two books before I read Jade Legacy, and my love for these two books have skyrocketed my expectations for Jade Legacy. High expectation isn't a healthy mindset to adapt when you're approaching a series because it often leads to disappointment. But occasionally, a special book can meet and even exceed those expectations. Jade Legacy is that kind of special book. It is unbelievably better than the previous two books which again as I said were already amazing. And Jade Legacy in my opinion is a novel that's equally traumatizing but superior compared to A Storm of Swords by George R. R. Martin. It's tragic, it's soul crushing but it's also hopeful and filled with love. Read this trilogy as soon as possible and if that's still not enough to convince you I hope that the rest of this video will be able to convince you to give this series a try. Feel free to consider this video a why you should read the Greenbone saga slash a Jade Legacy spoiler free review. Almost every acclaim I bestowed upon Jade Legacy applies to both Jade City and Jade War, except that it's executed multiply better in Jade Legacy. There will be no spoilers on this video, so if you haven't started reading the Greenbone saga, you're safe here. Let's start with an overview of the Greenbone saga. The main story of Jade City revolves around two rival families, the No Peak Clan and the Mountain Clan. There is one source of power in the city of Janlun, Jade. Jade is the lifeblood of the city of Janlun. It is a stone that could enhance its user, or a Greenbones warrior's ability. But more on this later. Jade has always been controlled by the No Peak Clan and Mountain Clan, but that situation changed when a modern drug that could allow anyone, even if they're foreigners or nobody, the ability to wield Jade. So that's the premise. In Jade City, we follow the story from the perspective of four main characters of the No Peak Clan. Lan, Hilo, She, and Anden. Almost the entirety of the story in the first book takes place in the city of Jan Lun. Jade War started to expand upon this by having the story centered in Espinia as well. By the time we reach Jade Legacy, the conflict involved individuals and places around the world. But at the core of everything, the city of Jan Lun, the Nopi clan, and the mountain clan are the center of the narrative. If you have been following every news about this series, you should know by now that this trilogy is incredibly ambitious, especially for Jade Legacy. One of the main reasons why this trilogy is so ambitious is due to the time span that the story requires. In Jade City, the story spans more or less a year or two. In Jade War, the story spans about six years, but in Jade Legacy, the story spans more than two decades. And it also involves multiple time skips, so in total, the trilogy consists of more than 30 years of storyline. This is not an easy thing to do, especially not in the final book of a trilogy. It is unconventional, it is risky, and multiple time skips means we, as readers, sometimes don't get to experience some of the events that the characters have experienced. In some worst cases, this actually makes the story feel disjointed, and they could end up halting organic character development, but rest assured this doesn't happen in this trilogy. None of this applied to any books in the series, even Jade Legacy. The multiple time skips actually give the storyline such an epic feel and plus, Fondali always managed to fill in these gaps with crucial and necessary information at a terrifying effectiveness and efficiency. It's honestly insane, it's nothing short of miraculous and it worked. It bloody worked. 
The multiple time skips allowed Fondali to tell a meticulously crafted series of novels. To me, for example, in Jade Legacy, there is something so different and impressive about it. It felt like I was reading an entire trilogy or quartet inside this one book. Each story part in Jade Legacy felt like reading a novel on its own. I'm serious, the first quarter of Jade Legacy already made me feel like I went through an entire novel of reading. So many of my emotions bled for these characters already. I've read plenty of trilogies with lesser emotional weight compared to the first quarter of this book. It is that good, and since the first book, the series never stops getting better, getting more intense, getting more emotional, and getting more heart-wrenching. Each book in the series has a magnificent beginning, build-up, and climax sequence. The scope of the storyline gets bigger and bigger, and this trilogy is really an emotional bloodbath. In this heartrending story filled with themes about family, reconciliation, trust, legacy, politics, power, money, family, and war, I have shockingly let out a breath I didn't realize I was holding several times, especially in Jet Legacy. Lee's capability to shift a peaceful situation to a catastrophic event in a flash is just impeccable. And at the core of its greatness, what elevated the Greenbone saga to a masterpiece status was the extremely well-realized characters and characterizations. Personally speaking, with all my heart and confidence, I'm going to say that Kaul Hilo Shudon has become one of my favorite characters of all time. Fondali has done such an outstanding job in creating and building Hilo's tremendous character development. If you have followed my reviews for years, you might know that Kaladin Stormblast from the Stormlight Archive by Brandon Sanderson is one of my favorite protagonists of all time. Hilo, to me, is on that same level as Kaladin. This doesn't mean that Hilo is perfect. He's flawed in many ways, but he's also passionate, inspiring, and despite his flaws and temperament, he always tries his best to become a better version of himself. And I know it's not fair of me to mention only Hilo. This masterful level of characterizations was applied to many other characters in the trilogy. The Greenbone saga is an epic urban fantasy. It's a gangster family saga featuring a lot of key characters. By the time we reach Jet Legacy, we have more than 10 POV characters, and whether they appeared briefly or not, every one of them has an undeniably distinct voice and characterizations. The characterizations in the Greenbone saga is an absolute marvel. It's definite that Lee understands her characters inside and outside. In addition to Hilo, some of my favorite characters were Lan, Wen, She, the Mike brothers, Anden, and many more. Whether it's out of love, belief, or personal reasons, the conflicts and clash of ideals felt believable. And they all made mistakes. Sometimes, my favorite characters, Hilo included, made decisions I don't agree with, and that's okay. I don't have to agree with everything my favorite characters do to love them. The contrast in their virtues and flaws just made them more genuine and authentic as a character. If you can tell by now, the characters in the Greenbone saga are real to me, and I feel like I've really known them and their personality. Understanding, forgiveness, loyalty, overcoming weaknesses are all integral in the development of these characters. The love, hatred, admiration the characters have for their loved or hated ones felt palpable. I wish I could elaborate and tell you what made each character one by one in the series so compelling, but that would make this video even more longer than it already is. I can, however, tell you one essential element that Lee has employed to heighten the tension and stakes of the narrative. And it's because of the character's actions. The character's actions from all the books in the series have consequences. Actions and decisions in the series matters a lot. This is something that Fona Lee emphasized in the narrative, and she wields it like a clean blade to incite incredible effect. Repercussions from the events of Jade City and Jade War were monumental. The chain of events built up were terrific and pivotal or relatively small decisions often result in permanent consequences. One out of many examples in the series, I never expected a few nobodies from the first book would become some of the most memorable supporting characters in Jade Legacy. Not only Lee isn't afraid to kill off her characters brutally, but the powerful emotional investment I have with the characters of the entire trilogy really increase and enhance the dangers in the narrative even further. The characters in this trilogy suffered a lot. I thought the first two books were rough already, but they're nothing compared to what the characters face in the last book. Jade Legacy was on a new level of trauma and intensity, and before we get to reach the perilous finale, we're guaranteed to suffer with the characters first. It's incredibly easy to praise Fondali's vivid and savage battle scenes. She is one of the best combat scenes writer in the genre. Since Jade City, the heart magic system revolved around Jade rely on six abilities. Deflection, perception, lightness, channeling, strength, and still. This is used throughout the entire trilogy. It is a hard magic system, but it never gets in the way of the story. And these abilities never gets old. It's amazing what Lee can do with the six abilities by adding martial arts, guns, cars, airships, and explosives to it. 
Every tempestuous violence in the series felt refreshing, pulse-pounding, and cinematic. This is one of the few fantasy series that could work wonderfully adapted as manga, anime, video games, TV shows, or movies. So yes, her prose when it comes to the art of descending violence was extraordinary as always. But I need to highlight one more thing that Lee excels at, the dialogues. The quality of Lee's expertise in the dialogues is incalculable. Similar to the heart-pounding battle scenes, the conversation between characters frequently have stakes, murderous intent, and emotional weight imbued into them. Negotiations always felt perilous, instant oblivion wait for them at all times. It always felt like one wrong word or sentence could invite immediate ruin. Blood must always be paid with blood. This is Lee's design for devastating conflicts, supercharged battle scenes, and dialogues. I absolutely love reading Fonda Lee's prose. They all flow so smoothly to me and the pacing was unputdownable. The plotline and actions always felt breathtaking and the Asian-inspired fantasy metropolis felt so intricate and vivid and immersive. And most importantly, the cactus arc was so immensely rewarding. As I mentioned earlier, I love the Green Bone Saga so much that I even reread both Jade City and Jade War before I dive into Jade Legacy because I want to do justice to this book as much as possible. As much as I love rereading, this isn't something that I often do due to my infinite TBR pile, but I just have to do it for this trilogy. And it's worth it. It is so worth it, and I know I'm going to reread this trilogy again one day. Fondali's exceptional achievement in completing the Greenbone Saga earned her a spot in the pantheon of fantasy greats. I love Jet City and Jet War so much, but I will give 6 out of 5 stars to Jet Legacy if I could. Seriously, it is a masterpiece. I've read more than 500 fantasy novels in my life, and Jet Legacy belongs in my top 10 books of all time. The Greenbone Saga has become my number one favorite completed fantasy trilogy of all time. It has dethroned Miss Bourne trilogy by Brandon Sanderson. So yes, please read this urban epic fantasy trilogy as soon as possible. I highly, highly recommend it with all my heart, seriously. It is absolutely amazing, a true masterpiece. And I just want to say thank you so much to Fondali for writing this amazing trilogy. You have my utmost gratitude for writing this series and I'm a clan loyalist for life. Oh, and also apparently this boy is also a clan loyalist for life. Look at him. Ta-da! He has the power to use Jade. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty much it for me today and also from Chocoboy. As always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. Bye-bye.